we're back, and this week, we're counting down the best Peplum movies. The channel is back, and just as promised, it is improved. No more robotic AI narration. I'm not a robot! I'm not a robot! This week, we're taking a look at the best Peplum films from the 70s and 60s. Let's get into it. Follow the yellow brick road. For those of you who don't know, peplum is a Greek word for tuning, a garment that was worn in ancient Greek times and also the euros and peplum forms. Any questions not about the dress? Tunic. These forms were based on the legends of Hercules, Perseus and other legendary Greek heroes. Unfortunately, Hercules will not feature in this video list as we've already covered him in a previous video. A link to that video will pop up on your screen at the end of this video. Released in 1960, The Giants of Thessaly tells the tale of the city of Thessaly which is run over by barbarians and plagued by natural disasters. Why did we leave for cultures? Because the oracle said the volcanoes will lay waste our land just as long as the Golden Fleece stays on foreign soil. And I swear to you that I'll return with it if I have to paddle the ship with my own hands. King Jason and his agronauts set out on a quest to find the fabled Golden Fleece. The film was originally titled The Agronauts of Thessaly, but to appeal to an American audience, the name was changed. The producers of the film assumed that American audiences wouldn't know what the word agronaut meant, and just like with the popular Steve Reeves film that came out the previous year, the name was retitled for international release. Gladiator 7 had several names including Spartan Gladiator, The Spartan Gladiators and The Revolt of the Seven. This Italian film starred American actor Tony Russell, who primarily worked in the Italian film industry. Modern film critics called the film cheesy and incomprehensive. But let's face it, nobody's watching Peplum films for the storyline. Before we continue, Friend of Dorothy's publish videos every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, so please remember to click like and subscribe. Also, we like hearing from you, so please leave a comment. Now back to the video. Set in Crete around 1500 BC, Minotaur the Wild Beast of Crete starred the two-time Olympic gold medalist Bob Matthias, who starred in only four forms. Primarily a decathlon athlete, he proved himself to be one of the best athletes in the world during the 1952 Olympics, but sadly he retired from sports soon thereafter. His muscular body made him a perfect fit for peplum films, but unfortunately the film received unfavorable reviews and his acting career ended soon thereafter. What am I going to do alone? <laughs> Come to Athens with us. <laughs> Perseus the Invincible was released in 1963 and starred Richard Harrison. It was also one of the first movies to feature Perseus. Perseus! Ah! <laughs> the film was renamed Medusa Against the Son of Hercules for international release, despite it not having any connection to any Hercules legend and rather being based on the legend of Perseus. Which Perseus was your favourite? Richard Harrison, Harry Hamlin or Sam Worthington? Let us know in the comments. Colossus of Rhodes was Sergio Leone's first feature film. This legendary director was the pioneer of spaghetti western films and is also considered as one of the most influential directors of cinema history. Classes of Rhodes initially had the handsome John Derrick attached to Star, however he was fired from the film during production due to creative differences. This even led to a lawsuit between the actor and the director. Within its walls, the temple of the devil worshippers, as the great god Moloch incites its followers into a raging fury of ecstasy and terror. And behind the wicked heart of the Colossus, the fiendish torture chamber. Yeah! Steve Reeves was a popular choice during the Peplum craze, starring in numerous films including The Avenger, The Trojan Horse, The Slave, Duel of Titans and of course he embodied the base Hercules to ever grace the silver screen. I intend to leave. Now, we have a friend of the king at Laurentum. I have to visit him. 
Very good. I could give a brief description of the film's plot, but I mean, it's a Steve Reeves film. What more do you need to know? We could check in an old Steve Reeves movie. At number four on our list is another Steve Reeves movie, The Trojan Horse. With a higher score on IMDb, the film retells the story of the Trojan Wars, which led to the Trojan War. Did you ever watch The Trojan Horse? Which one of Steve Reeves' movies is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Later. You don't appear surprised to see me here, Aeneas. I'm only surprised that you did not come sooner. I suppose you think I am a selfish woman who is incapable of love. If you're here to betray Paris, so that Menelaus can at last be revenged for another betrayal, you can save your breath. You're mistaken. Another film set during the Trojan War was 1962's The Fury of Achilles. This film starred American actor and bodybuilder Gordon Mitchell. The film also infamously reused footage from the 1961 Steve Reeves film The Trojan Horse. The reused footage was eventually cut from the UK release, resulting in the UK release being 20 minutes shorter than the US release. Atlas was released in 1961 and starred Michael Forrest. This is one of the few Peplum films that was filmed in Greece and not in Italy. And Atlas, champion of Epidaurus! Atlas indeed. I wonder who's holding up the earth. Director Roger Corman arranged for 500 soldiers from the Greek army to be extras in the film. But on the day of filming, only 50 soldiers showed up. So they had to get creative during filming. Corman had the soldiers march in formation in a circle in and out of view of the camera to give the illusion of a massive army. Despite Atlas having massive potential to become the best peplum film of all time, there is one film that surpassed Atlas in production value and scope. Considered by many to be the best peplum film ever, The Giant of Marathon was loosely based on the Battle of Marathon, which took place around 490 BC. The film starred legendary Steve Reeves in the leading role and was one of the most successful films of the era. The goal there is a sign of distinction. It's not for us. Well, I've never been there myself, but I hear Theocrates goes there all the time to show how rich he is to everyone. According to MGM Records, the film was extremely successful at the box office upon release, with a profit of $429,000, or about $3.4 million today, adjusted for inflation. The film was initially titled The Battle of Marathon, but was retitled The Giant of Marathon to highlight Steve Reeves' incredible physique. Co-star Mylene de Mangio wrote in her biography that, despite his incredible muscles, Reeves wasn't strong at all and could hardly carry her on his shoulders for long periods of time during filming. But, it should also be noted that Steve Reeves suffered a shoulder injury the previous year while filming The Last Days of Pompeii. But really, who cares if he could carry his co-star on his shoulders? I mean, it's Steve Reeves. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date as soon as I post new videos. For a similar video, click on this link.